All righty. Well, welcome, everyone. This is uh, Glenn Lord, and I'm here with Mary Lee Robinson. And uh, Mary Lee, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Greetings from the low country of South Carolina. It's a beautiful day here. Um, I live in the low country, and from here, I work on my books and um, do a lot of social media on the behalf of widows and widowers. Uh, the books are all, at this point, through the Grief Diaries series, which are available on your site, as well as mine. Um, since I was widowed in 2013, I've been just kind of chipping away, doing whatever I could for widows and widowers because I found such a lack of resources for myself. Um, thankfully, that's improved. But uh, I enjoy what I'm doing, and I talk to thousands of widows online and uh, write and keep going like that. You so, mentioned you've done an awful lot of writing. You're kind of prolific in the writing, and obviously the writing has helped you a lot with uh, your grief journey as well as helping others. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, when you're, when you're writing, what, what is the main message you want to get across to, uh, to bereaved individuals when you're doing I that? should also tell you that when I was first widowed, I sat down and, and took a census of my family, most of which are gone now, um, and discovered that out of the eight closest members of my family, uh, five of them had been widowed and three of them widowed twice. So it's a, a topic that I'm very familiar with and it's very dear to my heart. And I don't remember making a conscious decision to sit down and write. I think I was just being yelled at by them to do it. <laughs> um, they, they kind of compelled me to start. And the point of it and what drives me is I wanted other widows uh, to realize that they're not alone. You know, this is a very normal, natural experience. Um, we tend in this society to think that only happens to other people's and how's that working out? Um, we need to normalize it more. And that's the objective of a lot of what I do. Well, thank you. Um, I think you're helping a lot of people with that. Now, you okay. went on the um, Bereavement Cruise as a presenter, was it two years ago, I think it was at this point? Maybe three. Uh, I, I think it was three. Um, I would very much like to have participated in the subsequent two and, and don't know about the ones coming up, but among my other uh, hats that I wear is full-time caretaker for my mother who lives with me. She's 89, so being away seven days out in the middle of the sea is just not an option for me right now, but that's, I'm torn because I'd really, really like to, to be with you guys again. And the time will come when I am. Um, the first one was such a great experience and I made met people that I'm still friends with. Um, and some of them I talked to at least once a week. So it was a, it was a very gratifying time. And what was your thoughts it. about the cruise before you went, though? When you first heard about a bereavement cruise, do you remember what, what you thought before you knew what it was and before you, obviously, you loved it and you'd, you know, love to be back on it, but, but um, before you ever went on it, what were your thoughts? Do you remember? My, my impressions? Yes. That it was going to be a real downer. <laughs> and nothing could have been further from the truth. It was very uplifting. Um, it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, the one thing that sticks out in my mind and, and I have a very clear memory about was not only visiting the ports and having terrific food and meeting new people, but we would be at dinner as a group and people would come up to us who were not part of our group and ask us what our organization was about and what we were doing because we were obviously having such a good time. And that spoke volumes. Because we were. Um, the thing that I guess you don't think about until you've participated in it that is that the conversations flow very naturally. You're with people who get it. Um, they understand if you want to um, laugh because it's perfectly acceptable to laugh even if you're grieving. Um, they understand if you get a little, little tearful because they get a little tearful too sometimes. Um, you can be yourself 
And that's a tremendous blessing, particularly in this time that we're in when we seem to have conjured up the notion that, like I said, death only happens to other people, it happens to everybody. And we should get back to the place where we understand that. No, I think that uh, that's, that's for me, I would agree. I think that that's uh, that ability to connect with people kind of almost instantly um, to me, it happens only at a couple of unique times in our lives. It's like that first day of kindergarten when everybody's ready to connect or the first day of college when everybody's ready to connect. And there are only so many times in our lives when that happens, but the, the grief cruise is one of those unique events. Everybody shows up and you just immediately, people are ready to jump into that and make new relationships and make new connections. And, I'm glad you have some that have stayed with you. And while none of us would uh, refer or recommend another member to this club, it's not one we joined voluntarily. It is a, a unique club and it is a tight club. You form relationships that you don't form elsewhere. So obviously the cruise did not turn out to be the downer that you thought it might have been. But um, if you were to be talking to someone, you know, who, who is considering going on the cruise and hasn't, hasn't yet made that decision, but saying, well, maybe they're at that same place you were, where they're thinking maybe it'd be a downer, but maybe they're ready to go at the same time. What, was some, what would you say was the most surprising aspect of the cruise once you were there? Well, the connections were certainly a surprise. I didn't, I, I was joining a group of people I'd never met before. And while I'm pretty outgoing and don't have a hard time doing that, I nevertheless thought that this could be, you know, a few days on out at sea could be awkward. It wasn't at all. Um, the community that participates in this cruise are such warm and loving people that you're going to have a great time. And there were some very moving moments. The, um, the uh, walk of memories was particularly poignant, um, but there were lots of them and there were lots of moments of laughter. And I can't stress that enough. Um, probably if I were talking to someone who wanted to know whether or not they should go, the thing I would tell them is that it's, it's a great way to find your hope again. You know, that you can have a good time and you can find warmth and love and companionship and friendship again because it's found there yeah yeah i found that too um one other question i have for you um you know you, you obviously are a widow and there's many other bereaved individuals that come from different areas whether they lost their parents or their children or you know different different relationships that may be there how did you find the mix of the relationships as far as how did that work from your perspective with the cruise well I haven't lost a child, so obviously I can't identify and relate to that um, at great depth, but we can relate to the loss. And it was very easy to talk to people who had had different losses than my own. Um, loss is loss. And you, when a part of your heart disappears, um, you understand somebody else who's lost a part of their heart. So there were no barriers. There were no walls. Um, the only thing that varied were the details. No, that's true. I think that that's, that's the connection. I think a lot of people have that, that fear that they're not going to be able to connect, but you're right. Loss is loss. And we all have that, that hole in our heart and we understand it in different ways from different perspectives, but nonetheless, that's exactly what it is. And we can connect with one another through that. Um, and, you know, you, you've kind of helped a lot in terms of saying how you came from one perspective to another, and you've kind of shared, you know, different things that people may experience on that. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a different angle, but, you know, what would you say was the biggest challenge you had with the cruise? Um, I, for me personally, it was one that not everyone will have. As you mentioned, I was a presenter, <laughs> and I planned it out very carefully because Although I've spoken publicly before, I had not spoken on this particular topic in public before. Um, so reaching into my bag of speaker's tricks, I planned to wear a, uh, a resort wear red dress to keep the focus and on what I was saying. And I planned out my, my talk very specifically and had a PowerPoint. And it turned out the audience wasn't who I thought it was going to be. And the whole room was red. 
So I had to toss my wardrobe selection, toss my PowerPoint um, presentation, and just sort of speak from memory and my heart, and it went fine. Um, everybody in the room was not only supportive, but I think they followed what I was trying to say, and um, it worked out just okay. I, it, you know, I shouldn't have worried so much. Well, I think that speaks a lot to the quality of speaker you are and the quality of presenter you are and your knowledge of the topic because that's, uh, um, you know, one, one, uh, a, a mentor of mine who had th spoken thousands of times, she always told me, she said, uh, you know, you can plan all you want, but the speak is, cause speech is going to be the speech. And so I think sometimes you just have to let it go. So, no, I'm glad to, glad to hear that. I spoke a lot to the, the people who were in the audience. They were open and welcoming and receptive, and the one-on-ones go like that, too. Um, when you sit down, because you'll, you'll run into other people who are part of the group in the, uh, the pool area or in the restaurant at lunchtime, and we tend to gravitate towards each other and have conversations, and they flow that easily, too. So uh, there were no strangers in the group. There weren't. So that made my talk go a lot easier. I don't know that it's attributed to, to my abilities as much as it was to the audience, but um, they were very welcoming and, and participated when, they, when I needed them to participate. And the conversations in the, the restaurants went the same way. So if someone would like to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Well, thank you for asking. Um, I've just launched a new website recently that's a little easier to remember than the old one. It's uh, www.widowlution.com, just like revolution, widowlution.com. And um, readers will find a, a whole bunch of articles that are aimed at widows, but are often applicable to anyone who's had a loss. Um, and there's a, a number of my books that are available there, as well as on the Greek toolbox. Site, um, and there's a contact form there. So if you want to reach out to me, that's a good place to do it, or you can catch me on Facebook at The Widow or Widower Next Door. Excellent. Thank you, very, Mary Lee. I really appreciate all your time and, and I appreciate you sharing your, uh, your experience with the cruise. So thank you very much. My pleasure entirely. Wish I could be with you in the next one. <laughs>